session, uh, in the session we sat down with Andre Neves, the CTO and co-founder of ZBD. We'll be discussing a bit about Lightning Address, uh, his his project in ZBD, how it works, and how it's changing how we interact with Bitcoin. Hello, Andre. Hi, Hansen. How are you doing? Pleasure to be here. I'm fine. Uh, can you tell? Uh, I, I know about ZBD because I've been using it myself. But for people who doesn't know know you or ZBD, can you tell us about yourself, your your Bitcoin story? How did you discover Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think it depends when you consider someone to be OG. Uh, that you know nowadays uh, it's been what 14 years, maybe 13 years of, of Bitcoin. So uh, I've been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and, you know, the early days of, of Bitcoin was really the fascination of Bitcoin, the notion of moving money on the Internet. Uh, I'm originally from Brazil and my folks, my parents have seen and dealt with three different monies in their in their lifetime. Right. So imagine what that's like uh, when their son comes out of nowhere and says, hey, there's this new money and it's Bitcoin and it's global and it's digital. Um, but, but really Bitcoin was, was just sort of like the inflection point for me to, to begin learning about the technology, uh, immediately as, as a product builder, as a, as an engineer, uh, you really grasp the, the, the sort of immense capacity of this innovation of this invention and, and in this case, Bitcoin. Um, but it felt very foreign and very diff distant when it comes to building products on Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin layer one, as I'm sure everyone is familiar, is pretty, pretty low level, right? We're talking about block times and waiting for blocks to be mined so that transactions can occur. Uh, so as a product builder, that, that was a bit distant, right? So uh, even though I was part of the industry, really learning and really participating, uh, things really kicked into, into the next gear, into, into final gear. Um, when the Lightning Network began, you know, uh, uh, sort of appearing in, in the industry. And uh, specifically, uh, the white paper was put out at the end of 2015. Uh, in 2016, I was still pretty, you know, involved. Uh, and, you know, I would argue that I've been one of the, the folks involved in, in even the early days of Lightning before it was even in mainnet, right? It was what's known as testnet. Um, so I was running a node, testing, and, and you know, software was early days. Um, but then, you know, that was around 2018, uh, 2017, sorry, in 2018, uh, I got uh, invited to be one of the 10 folks uh, participating in the Chain Code Labs residency program. Uh, Chain Code is a R&D uh, sort of development group uh, in New York City that supports uh, Bitcoin, supports and teaches Bitcoin and Lightning Network engineers. Uh, so I was amongst uh, 10 other folks that were picked uh, for the very first Lightning residency program. So we all got together and sort of learned from, from the best, right? The folks writing the software, the folks writing the implementations. Uh, and that was a very, very good sort of, you know, month long course that got me started. Um, and, you know, prior to, to Bitcoin, uh, I've been building software and products and software teams for the better half of, uh, for almost nine years, 10 years now before Bitcoin. Um, and then, you know, taking that capability, taking that experience of building teams and software and products, uh, coupled that with my ex, my, you know, now expertise in, in Bitcoin and Lightning. Uh, and I realized that the future is, is really bright in this industry and I would love to do my, my part in making it a reality. Uh, and so in 2019, we co-founded uh, Zebedee, right? So after learning all about the technology and pursuing it, that's, that's what formed into Zebedee. Um, I can go into Zebedee a little bit more in detail in, the, in a presentation in a second, but in a nutshell, Zebedee is a next generation fintech. Um, we power games, game developers and gamers with the power of Bitcoin. Um, so whether you're building games with Bitcoin, whether you're a gamer that wants to interact with Bitcoin online or in your games, uh, Zebedee's here for you. And we have a, a slate of products that serve that customer base. Very interesting. Indonesia itself uh, is a very, a very... Is a country with lots of gamers, around seven. Yes, yeah, around seventy-nine percent of Indonesians consider themselves to be gamers. So it's, yeah, it's it's very fascinating. Exactly. Yeah, and 
And it's interesting because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm from Brazil and Brazil is, is one of the one of the largest countries in the world, but it's specifically one of the most connected countries in the world when it comes to Internet usage. Virtually everyone has a smartphone. Virtually everyone has Internet connection. And, you know, it's no uh, small feat. Uh, it's not a coincidence, I guess, that Bitcoin is thriving in Brazil. And I imagine Bitcoin is thriving in, in places like Indonesia as well, because it's a large population. It's, uh, you know, well connected to the, the Internet and then also uh I guess, skewing the demographic to be a younger demographic, which are able to grasp games and digital points and value and money, right? So, so it's, it's fascinating. Indonesia still has a lot to learn, and this is why we make this, this, this educational content. But before, you, uh, before uh, getting into your presentation, can you tell me sure. what, what's the reason you choose Bitcoin? Because, you know, lots of people make their own blockchain their own coin why not make zbd coin or or something like that yeah so uh specifically for Ze I'll, i'll answer that in two parts one from the zebedee business side and then one from you know my personal take uh so from the zebedee side i think one of the the ideas that we've had since the beginning is the notion of siloed economies so every game has an in-game reward system or an in-game point system or an in-game economy and each of these games have their own economies right so they're all these siloed worlds where you know in fortnite you have v bucks and that's great inside of fortnite's world but then if you go to world of warcraft all those hours and money and time and effort is worthless in world of warcraft so it's almost like you're going from a world to a different world with different monies different values different standards um so from the zebedee side our take was what if the money was the same right we send information data around the internet everywhere whether it's japan indonesia brazil india us europe like data is is homogenous it's interoperable um but the money in in games and in virtual environments wasn't and isn't uh so our take is that you know let's let's pick the one that has the chance that has the opportunity that has the properties the money that is able to scale to become the global money of the world uh and then and that is bitcoin so from a technology standpoint as as a you know as as a developer as an engineer really it is the only system that's capable of scaling to the degrees of of humans inside of the world right we're talking about billions of people um you can't scale other types of blockchains and we've seen that on and on um and and i think so so from the business side of zebedee that's a really important piece for us it has to be the most liquid money has to be the most understood money has to be the most uh, uh compliant and regulated and you know there are exchanges and and liquidity in every country in the world bitcoin is a global brand and there isn't a single bitcoin company pushing it this is an organic growth um so it's it's sort of you know Uh, hands down, the best uh, technological and, and solution for this purpose. Now, from a personal level, I think uh, specifically there's many properties of money that Bitcoin brings that we simply have not had in human history. Uh, the notion of actually custodying one's funds in, through a private key, right? The notion of a money that is separate from the state and separate from anything else. Um, the notion that you know, not a few select folks, whether they were voted or not, get to control the issuance of money, the monetary policy, how money is made. Um, all of that, really, the, the decentralized nature of Bitcoin, right, that that makes it the best form of money. And so from a personal sense, it made, from a personal level, it made perfect sense that I understand the technology, I am a product builder, I see the merit and the value in this new money. So I would love to dedicate my life to making it grow and succeed um so those are the two facets right from a personal take and from a business take and and bitcoin really marries the two uh it is the better the best technology and yet it is the best money um so that's the that's the reason why for bit for, for bitcoin <laughs> i guess once you understand it it just makes sense it's it's fascinating to have been you know the, the the people that were in the room in the 2014s and saying bitcoin and saying hey it's 2015 look at bitcoin and and it was seen as really weird and early and whoa andre take a step back uh and it's interesting to see those in this those same people those friends and colleagues learning about it in their own ways and then coming back and saying wow okay there's merits right they, they once they 
once they understand it, once they get it, it starts clicking and they're like, oh, wait a second. What about this thing in the world? What about, you know, understanding Bitcoin really makes you question certain status quo uh, of, of how society works, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think uh, to answer your question, I think someone can be considered an OG after they, they, they got through at least one cycle, one bull and bear <laughs> market. And in this bear market, uh, uh, the good thing is we don't really talk about price anymore. We we have a chance to learn and build. That's why we want to exactly. work. Okay, exactly. I'm really excited to, 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 to get into your presentation, if you may. Absolutely. Let's do it. Let me share yeah. screen really quickly. Um, and you can let me know if you can see everything. So uh, there we go. Are we looking good, Hanson? Yeah, I can see ZBD. Per perfect. Um, so I figured I would give a, a little bit of, a, of an introduction as to you know, the why of Zebedee and, and why we are building uh, this platform and the, and the company um, and kind of a little bit of a history to it and then touch on sort of the products that we have, which you know, helps illustrate how we're solving these problems for gamers and game developers. Um, so just very briefly, you know, what is the relationship of money and games? Uh, money has always been part of games. It's a 40 plus year relationship ever since the very first games were around. We had money, right? You can go back to arcade machines and arcade games. Those are the very first forms of money that, that had, uh, sorry, games that had money involved. And how did that work? You would walk up to the arcade machine, you would slot in a quarter, right? Or, or however many quarters you need. And then you, pl you play and that's sort of, you know, you're paying for the entertainment of, of playing that game. Um, and so money was always involved and, and money was always part of the game itself. It's not just the paying into the game. It's always been part of it. So you remember, I'm sure we all here remember Super Mario and having to, you know, you pick up coins, right? What is that? Those coins are valuable. You're, you're jumping to pick up coins or you have uh, in on the bottom left here, you have uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, where, you know, you, you score or you complete the mission and you get dollars, right? You get $400 worth in, in this GTA world. Um, on the right side, you even see uh, the, the, the flourishing in-app purchased flows, which are these, you know, you have gems and you have gold and you have coins and you have silver. And these are all monies that exist inside of games. So, so money has always been involved in games, but it has never really been money, right? This is the important piece. When you, when you slot 25 cents, you don't suddenly get 25 cents in the game. And when you win against the big boss in GTA, you don't get $400 in real life and you get to go down the street and use those. Uh, that's not how it works. So money never worked in games, even though it was always part of games. And the missing link is really the fact that that the the points, the credits, the the gold, the gems inside of these worlds, inside of these economies, were siloed. And it goes back to our point from earlier. It's 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 only worth something in their system. So Bill Gurley is a big uh, gaming VC, and uh, this is a great tweet uh, that we actually edited. Right. So it says the real issue is that gaming thrives on credits and points. And the majority of these points have no value, right? They're locked in these systems. Now imagine if there was a, a, a token or a point or a system that was also liquid, uh, that, that was not only just liquid, but also had value, right? So if, if you could carry that value across and, and that's Bitcoin, right? But why are we talking about this? And it's, and really why is Bitcoin important in the, in the concept of games? It's because Money is not digital. Like we all think about, oh, my money's in the bank and it's a digit in the computer somewhere. But you can't, again, you can't shove a $10 bill into a computer and expect it to do anything because money is analog. It's a construct that we created. Um, and that, so money was, was, is not digital, it's analog. And money is very expensive to deal with, right? Let's just take a brief second to talk about an experience of a game developer that, you know, whose game, games are global inherently, right? We're talking about the Bitcoin conference in Indonesia. Um, you know, I'm from Brazil, uh, we're in the US, right? So, so there's, you know, games are global inherently. Um, and so if there is a scenario where a game developer would like to say, hey, you're a great player, you've just beat the big boss, I would love to send you a reward for that. Uh, here's 10 cents of an euro, um, great. 
it, it seems feasible and it seems simple, but really what happens is the bank provider turns around and says, actually, it's going to cost you $5 to send those 10 cents. Um, and then we need to know who that is. And then are you, is your company allowed to do this? Is this gamer a criminal? Do they have any background that we should be checking? Right. So this list goes really long and, and, and it's expensive to deal with money. Right. So money is, dig is not digital. It's extremely expensive and it's a burden. Right. Um, if you're dealing with extremely large scale volume, which that's that's what Zebedee is aiming to do. Right. We are building infrastructure for large AAA game studios to power their monies. And so uh, if you're building that type of infrastructure, you will carry uh, the burden of being a uh, you know, regulated system of, of money that can power these, these transactions, that can power these capabilities in games, in applications, for users, uh, in the many you know, countries of the world. So money is, is a burden. You have compliance, you have transaction monitoring, you have taxes, right? Um, so how do you, you deal with that as a game developer? You know, that's a big, big mountain to climb. And that was until Bitcoin showed up, right? And then Bitcoin made money digital. So uh, in every single country in the world, as we mentioned before, Bitcoin is thriving. Um, even in countries where it is fully banned, it is thriving. And that's because it is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, not only that, we have real, you know, actual massive banks in the United States, in Europe, in Brazil, and many other countries who are adopting Bitcoin. So you can have your checking account, you can have your savings account, you can have your credit card account, and now you can have a Bitcoin account, right? These are these are becoming one and the same. Money is is now digital, um, and then second to that, money became programmable. So whereas before we talked about the experience of someone sending a gamer ten cents. Um, you know, that is complicated because you have to talk to the bank and there's APIs over here and there's a connection with the third party provider and yet another third party provider. Right. So uh, now money is just code. You can program it the same way you program anything. So from a game's perspective, uh, it's really that if this, then that if you jump, get 10 sats. If you beat the big boss, you know, win 10 Bitcoin. Uh, it's, it's entirely up to whoever's building that experience. Money is, is fully programmable. Um, and because of, of, you know, Bitcoin's growth is empowered by the fact that it runs on the internet and the internet is literally, you know, information highway. You can send information anywhere in the world instantaneously. News about something that happens in Indonesia reaches Brazil in seconds. Um, this wasn't possible before. And so, uh, technically speaking, Bitcoin's adoption rate is larger and faster than the internet. So it is empowered by the internet. We're now at over 100 million users. We're going to reach a billion users, you know, in the next few years. And that's quite a bit faster than the adoption rate of the internet. Um, and I would argue the internet is not even, you know, fully adopted in the world. There are many countries in many parts of the world that internet is not seen as a, as sort of a basic right or, or something that you are able to, to get at scale and, and, uh, you know, with infrastructure and so forth. Um, so what does that mean now? So that was sort of like building up to Zebedee, right? So what do we provide? We provide a way for game developers to not worry about the burdens, not worry about the complications of dealing with money. And here's a simple API integration. You can make any game add Bitcoin. It could be a play and earn game. It doesn't have to be. You could have a full blown economy with it. You could have in-game rewards, in-game points. The way it works is here's an API, go wild, build to your imagination, right? Really focus on the game experience and the user experience rather than focusing on, can I make this transaction because the user may be in such and such location, right? We, we take care of all of that. Um, so I was just going to take a second and show a little video and I'm going to talk through it. So. This is just showcasing, and I hope the stream is, is decent, but this is just showcasing a few of the, of, of the things you can build with Zebedee, right? So uh, I kept talking about in-game, uh, you know, economies and points. So this is just like Super Mario, or I'm sorry, Mario Kart. But in, when I throw coins, those are actual Satoshis. So I'm, I could either keep my coin or I could throw the coin to see if I can win the, the race, right? So um, in this example, you have... Uh, sponsors, uh, sponsored, uh, let me go back here. Um, you have sponsored areas, right? So in this case, we have BitRefill, which I imagine your, your uh, uh, audience may be familiar with. Um, and BitRefill is sponsoring an actual part of the game 
such that when the when the player passes by, bid refill is directly giving them a tiny bit of reward, so they have that interaction with the brand, right? But but it's in the game; it's native. Um, specifically, something that Zebedee has done in the past was we infused Counter Strike, so the very famous you know twenty million multi uh, uh, you know twenty million players a year, uh, most famous first person shooter in the world. We actually put Bitcoin in it, and we can add three D. Uh, coins to it, as you can see, um, we can add value to your life. So if you, if you, you know, in this case, if you shoot someone and you beat them, you could take their Bitcoin. The same way that data is flowing back and forth, money is flowing back and forth. Um, what else is cool? In this case, we're talking about uh, you know breaking the fourth wall between a, a streamer and an audience member, right? So uh, as you can see, we have this big QR code on the top right here. And audience members could affect a tiny little lightning payment. And if we get enough of these, it skews the whole game. So now you have the audience members interacting with the game, with the players through microtransactions. This is live now. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's really an interesting, I'm going to talk about streamers in a second. It's really an interesting uh, um, use case because uh, immediately Zebedee allows the, uh, you know, developer to attach money on anything, on any interaction, on any sort of facet of their experience. Um, so what does that mean? Um, you know, we're entirely powered by Bitcoin and specifically the Lightning Network. Uh, we use the Lightning Network to uh, reach, you know, extremely large throughput for transactions. So we're able to process hundreds of thousands of transactions, right, all of the time. Um, but it is entirely backed and based on Bitcoin. So really what that is, is open source money. We talked about it being decentralized. We talked about it being peer to peer. But one of the most important pieces of Bitcoin is that it's open source. Anyone can read it. Anyone can run it. Anyone can see uh, any issues with it. Um, it's instant and near zero fees because of the notion of using lightning for it. Um, it is fully programmable, as I mentioned, and you know, as as we talked about, you know, in depth, it is the most liquid, it is the most secure, it is the most widely accepted out in the world. So Bitcoin really provides us that capability. And with Zebedee, what can you do for the players? You can play games that have Bitcoin, and and the big hype nowadays is is play and earn games, games that have a little bit of reward. And and I want to take a second. It is in our view, it is not play to earn. This is not about turning a gaming experience into uh, a task or a job or, or a way to make money. It's play and earn. It's the notion of having value that is bi-directional. You put value into the game, you're able to take value out of the game in some way, shape, or form. We touched on audience participation. I will, I will touch on it in, in a second. And for the developers, we really allow them to better monetize their games. What that means is they're able to introduce real money that leads to higher retention of gamers, that leads to higher uh, you know, download rates, customer acquisition costs get lowered, and so on and so forth. Um, so sort of rounding up what Zebedee offers, right? We are a developer platform and a consumer app, right? Those are the two. We are in the game and we're with the gamer. Um, on the game developer side, we offer RESTful APIs, so developers will be familiar with this. Regardless of where you are, whether you're building a game in Unity or Unreal, or you're building a, a server backend or an application in the front end, you can use Zebedee, right? It's a very normal uh, RESTful API. We provide a developer dashboard that allows you to see all of your transactions, export those transactions, run analytics through it, uh, you know, it, it manage your API keys and so forth. Um, I will touch a little bit later on the game server. Uh, on the consumer side, we have the consumer app, which is the Zebedee app, where you're able to find all these games. You're able to get marketing material around, you know, new releases, new games that are powered with Bitcoin, how to earn uh, Sats, and etc. Um, we have built uh, the notion of a Zebedee gamer tag, which is akin to your Twitter username or or your Facebook, you know, username. And uh, what that means is your gamer tag can carry around different games. So Hansen could be your gamer tag, and you could be your gamer tag in Counter Strike, and your gamer tag in Call of Duty, and your gamer tag in World of Warcraft, and you sort of carry that identity across. And then, last but not least, we have various integrations for social. So um, we have integrations with Twitch, we have integrations with Discord, with Twitter, with Telegram. And the idea is, we are wherever the gamer is. If a gamer is on the go, 
we're on the phone in the app. If the gamer is on the desktop, we have a browser extension for. Him. If the gamer is chatting with their friends on Discord, we have a bot for that, right? And that's the idea behind providing this these social integrations. It's sort of an all-encompassing experience. Zebedee is with you wherever you go, wherever you are. And it is important to highlight that I touched on it is not play to earn, it is play and earn that we're really a part of. But uh, even though we're talking about microtransactions, nanotransactions, right? Lightning is tiny transactions at scale. Um, and so these are microtransactions of small value being settled instantaneously. Even though those are micro, the impact is actually macro. It is not a tiny impact. And specifically, I'm going to take a, a few screenshots here from uh, our uh, user base in Brazil, which are huge fans of, our, of the Counter-Strike uh, interact. Uh, uh, Counter-Strike integration that we have. And specifically what this is, is um, folks have been playing Counter-Strike in and out, day in, day out, week in, week out. They participate in our tournaments. They participate in the monthly events that we have. And these folks are not earning 10 Satoshis, 100 Satoshis. They're earning enough funds that they can go out and pay bills. They're going enough funds that they can go out and buy swag. They're earning enough funds that they can go grocery shopping. Now, I'm not suggesting that everyone can make a living off of these types of games, uh, but this is important because uh, even though, uh, you know, we, Zebedee in this case is a U.S. entity um, and based in the United States, we are changing lives of folks in Brazil. And why is that important? It's because global nature of Bitcoin. So I hope and I imagine we're also able to change the lives of folks in Indonesia who are playing our games and who do face the, the scenario of a currency, a national currency that isn't strong, that isn't, you know, set and, and you know, fluctuates quite a bit. Um, Bitcoin may be a way, you know, into, into improving that. So the effect of adding Bitcoin to games is actually macro. This is changing people's lives. Um, and it's very simple, right? We're talking about you reach out to us, you apply for API access, you connect to the game server, and you do whatever it is. I touched on it. Your imagination is the only limit. Um, I also touched on this and how, what does it mean to add uh, Bitcoin to games? I think if we're just to take a very quick snapshot from some of the developers that we've been working with, uh, when the second you introduce Bitcoin uh, rewards, retention doubles. So as a game developer, retention is the notion of how often do the gamer, does the gamer come back, right? Does he come, does he download the game one day and then never comes back? Is it every day? Is it every seven days? What is the retention? Uh, it is very clear and drastic 2x in retention, if not more, um, by giving a little bit back to the customers, to, to the users. And, the, and that's because gamers are interested in receiving value back from the value they put into the experience. Um, on the right side, we also see that uh, if your game is uh, powered by advertisements, which is a lot of mobile games these days, right? So you play for a while and they show a little bit of ads. Um, this is how the game developer monetizes the game. Uh, what's happening is that these games are giving a tiny bit of Bitcoin back as rewards to the, to the gamers. And the return on ad spend, the ROAS, the return on ad spend, uh, is increased by 40%, if not more, right? Depending on the jurisdiction. So uh, I it's, it's basically cut in half the notional cost of bringing in customers simply by saying, we have Bitcoin, right? And, and then they remain here for that experience. So it's very important. To, it's, a, it's a measurable impact for game developers. Um, and here are some QR codes for folks that would like to download some of the games and try them out. I think, you know, specifically, I'm a big fan of Balls King. It's, it's extremely ad addictive. And then at the end of the experience, you realize, oh, wait a second, I just earned 100 Satoshis. You know, it's, it's, it's great to be able to do that. Um, just to touch on a few uh, other products that I, I mentioned, I would, I would you know, highlight. Um, the uh, Zebedee bots, right? We touched on uh, the notion of being part of Discord, being part of Telegram. Um, you know, Zebedee is with you wherever, the, with wherever you are, wherever the gamer is, and the gamer is always on chats, whether they are on Discord, on Telegram. And so why not make it easy for them to use Bitcoin, to use money the same way they use it in the games? So uh, with the bot, you can, you know, t type slash send Hansen 50, and I've just sent you 50 Satoshis. It is as simple as sending a message. Everyone knows how to send an email. Everyone knows how to send a message. You can now send Bitcoin that same way. 
right? And these are very simple commands. And so the Zebedee bots are available for Telegram and for Discord, and they're available right now. Um, they lead to stronger communities. They lead to better uh, user experiences. Um, oh, if I am able to go to the next slide. Oh, there we go. Um, where are we? In uh, slideshow. Um, so here's an example of how a community can be leveled up. So imagine you're a gamer and you can use uh, my favorite command, which is the rain command. So let's say in a, in a Discord group, you have hundreds, thousands of gamers. So I want to make it rain Satoshis. I want to make it rain Bitcoin. You can do that. You can type slash rain and you can say 100 Satoshis for 10 people and the bots will help you ran randomly select 10 people that will get these prizes, right? So it, it, it literally is money as texting, right? And, and that's what Bitcoin allows you to do. Um, and then last but not least, I touched on tools for creators, right? Uh, the gaming industry is is one vertical, but it, it's, it's gaming is quite a bit more than just actually playing the games. Um, one of the biggest platforms nowadays is Twitch and Twitch is for watching games. It's for watching people play games. And that's because of streaming. So we actually built a the Zebedee Streamer, which is a tool that allows for you know content creators and streamers to provide a QR code and interact with the audience. They uh, receive tips and donations. They're able to read those comments. They're able to add sound bites, text to speech, and have a very interactive streaming experience with the audience and the streamer. And this is all feasible because of that capability of sending tiny, tiny amounts of you know, Bitcoin payments across. Um, and then the last thing I promise is the notion of login with Zebedee, right? Uh, if you're familiar with login with Google and login with Facebook and login with Twitter, we have released login with Zebedee. So the same way that you are able to uh, carry around your email address and you don't have to know your passwords for where you log in with Google, you can do the same with, with Zebedee now. And specifically, you're not only bringing your profile picture and your name and your email address, now you're gonna bring your Bitcoin wallet. So you can log into a game with Zebedee and the game is able to talk to your wallet and it's able to send you money, it's able to request from you and you can accept it. This is interoperable. This is the OAuth 2 standard. It's the same standard that exists for login with Google and Telegram uh, and Twitter. Um, so it's interoperable, but we add the money layer on it, right? This is very powerful and there's a lot of game developers that are building upon this. So expect more updates on this soon. Um, and so with that said, uh, that is Zebedee in a nutshell, right? Uh, please get in touch with me. I'm at Andre Nevis on Twitter. Uh, we are at Zebedee.io. Uh, and this is you know, really just a brief on what we can uh, provide you. If you're a game developer, please reach out. If you're a gamer, go to Zebedee.io slash app and you know, uh, uh, to your heart's desire, play some Bitcoin games and earn some sats. Okay, that's very interesting. I've been using ZB for quite some time, but yeah, I've learned more about it in this few minutes. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes you, you get lost in building features and uh, you want to build all the features, but then you want users to say, hey, I want that feature. So, um, you know, a big push for us is making sure that everyone knows of all the features and products we have. And yeah, one of the challenges also is to to keep up with development because most people know, most people in Indonesia know about Bitcoin, but they don't really know about Lightning. They 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 consider Bitcoin um, slow. That's why right. other coins emerge. And then when I, I I showed them Lightning, they were what that yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, we, you know, because we're a, ga we're a game, gaming company, we uh, sort of lots of Gen Z folks, uh, younger demographic are using Zebedee on a daily basis. And whenever we interview these folks to, or surveys or trying to or learn from our customers, uh, an interesting tidbit is uh, we, we heard is uh, Zebedee is the new way of doing Bitcoin. And it's because immediately they think of lightning. They, they don't necessarily know that it's lightning, but it's, Oh, it's new way of doing Bitcoin. It's, it's the fast way. It's the easy way. It's the lightning address way where I don't need a massive QR code or, or, or a string of characters that is very foreign to me. I can just send you some money at Hanson at Zebedee, right? And, and like that chain, that flip in mentality is interesting because 
that's their first interaction with Bitcoin potentially, right? It's not that they're, they used to have Bitcoin and it was slow and then they're learning about Lightning. It's their very first interaction is already in Lightning and it's, oh, it's, it's the right way, the new way of doing Bitcoin, right? And then I'm like, oh, interesting tidbit. I, I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always funny to, to, to see new users using it. But yeah, uh, yeah, I know. So what's your advice for people that's interested in integrating Bitcoin and Lightning to their business? Because uh, is it only for gaming in your, in your experience or is there another way to have a business that's powered by Bitcoin using the Lightning? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it is absolutely not just for games. Uh, I think, you know, it's... Uh, I, I say this a lot, and maybe it's it's rehashing the same story over and over again. But uh, in the in the eighties, in the seventies and eighties, when the engineers and researchers of, of DARPA were building the ARPANET, which you could argue is the early early versions of what eventually became the internet, um, they were trying to send bytes and and you know kilobytes of data from point A to point B successfully. Right? They were they were saying, you know, can I send you a message? That's that's as simple as it was. Uh, they were not thinking about solving the problems uh, or even building for the use cases that we have today, which one of the use cases, for example, is someone in Indonesia could be playing a video game that is hosted in the other side of the world, and they're playing on a computer that is hosted in the other side of the world through a server in in 8K video HD um, at 60 frames per second, right? And that is not why the internet was built. That's what it enabled, but that's not why it was built in the early days. It was built to share information, to share data. So we have barely scratched the surface, Hanson. Gaming, yes, massive vertical. I think it is ripe for it. The, the demographic is great. It, they're a younger demographic. They understand digital points. They understand money. Um, but it is not just the only thing. I think money is going to disrupt everything, just like the internet disrupted virtually every industry. Software ate every every single company has a software arm. Even if you're a, a, a fashion brand, you have to have a website and you have an online presence and you have that. So everything is software. Everything is going to touch Bitcoin. So every experience is going to be powered with Bitcoin. Gaming is one vertical. Everything else will eventually follow. In our opinion, gaming is the very first sort of domino to fall because it is, like I said, ripe for it. Um, I would argue that going down the street and paying for Starbucks or McDonald's with, with Lightning is a good experience. I would argue that it's not a perfect experience and is not yet a hundred times better than the current experience of, you know, tapping your phone uh, on, on the, on the, you know, the, the point of sale. So it, it's, it's getting there in certain phases. Online Bitcoin Lightning thrive and that thrives right now. Like you and I are discussing a technology that allows me to send you money immediately with no censorship, with no issues, right? And that wasn't feasible before. Um, if you're asking for specific advice uh, on, on, you know, introducing Bitcoin and Lightning to your applications, your platform, your services, your game, uh, it is not just about shoving Bitcoin in there and saying, A, it works, it's better. Just adding money is not better, right? Uh, just adding money to a game does not, for example, if we swapped Fortnite V-Bucks for Bitcoin, that doesn't inherently make Fortnite better, right? That That is, it's better in some way, shapes and forms for some gamers, but it doesn't immediately improve the gamer experience or makes it more competitive. It, it, you need to introduce it in a way that makes sense from a user experience, from a gamer experience, from a developer experience. Um, just shoving it in there is not a holy grail of it will be better, it will do better. Um, it's also important to, to note that different customers and different gamers and different users choose Bitcoin because of different reasons. Uh, Hanson, maybe you and I choose Bitcoin because we think it is hard money. It's unchangeable. The issuance uh, rate is there. The monetary policy is fixed. Other people just think that it is extremely fast. It, that's it. They don't necessarily care about the hard money. They care that it is fast. Other people may care that it's accepted in where my family lives and where I live. There you go. That's why they use it, right? So Bitcoin is many things. Um, I would definitely study customers' behaviors and user behavior before trying to just shove Bitcoin and Lightning into something. But I still expect Lightning to touch every application online, every service online, every platform, 
and then eventually bleed into the real world where it'll become the de facto best way to transact and buy something or sell something. Very, very interesting. I, 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 I sometimes imagine what, what lightning will be in a few more years. What, what can it, what can it do? Because yeah. I've tried the authentication with uh, uh, Lightning, and first time I used Lightning, uh, you know the usual invoice thingy, and then now you have the Lightning address, so it's easier. It's like just uh, shoot me up at Hanson at zvd.gg. You can send me there. But exactly. And what do you think? What do you think the the future of Lightning will be? That is a very, yeah, that's a very loaded question. Uh, yeah, I know. So um, one of the more interesting parts of Lightning for me specifically is that uh, unlike Bitcoin, where it has layer, Bitcoin's layer one, which is, you know, quote unquote, the blockchain, uh, it has a consensus mechanism. Everyone in the network must agree to these properties and these rules so that Bitcoin works let's just simplify it that way everyone must agree that is different than in lightning right in lightning it is still a peer-to-peer -peer network but it is not ruled by a consensus mechanism that everyone in the network needs to agree to how does that let me explain a little bit further hence and if you and i have a lightning channel um we are telling the world that we have a lightning channel and we're saying if you want to make payments through us you could you could do that um, but we can also attach our own rules, our own off-band decisions, our own requirements to that. So if you and I want to say that, you know, we have a lightning channel, um, but we don't want to put Bitcoin in that channel, and but you and I are trusting each other, that is perfectly fine because it's a trusted relationship. You and I are saying, we agree, we agree, great. We can still interoperate and connect to the wider lightning network even though other participants may not want to agree with you and I, right? It's, it's, it's a network where it's a trustless, you don't need to trust anyone in order to participate. So what you've seen is the proliferation of these uh, many different types of, you know, channels and, and, you know, I would argue different lightning networks, right? We're talking now about Taro, which is an adjacent protocol that touches very, you know, you're able to interoperate between Taro channels and Lightning channels. So that's where the whole notion of stable coins and Lightning comes from. Um, th that is not in the Lightning network, but you could argue that it's part of the Lightning network because it is adjacent and it's interoperable. So um, I think the Lightning network is going to look very different, actually, in a couple of years. And I imagine there will be a big, wide ranging network and you would have combinations of various interoperable protocols networks etc uh, that allow for the movement of money so in one day i can send you dollars and you can receive something else and it goes through the network as bitcoin that's an example right uh, you and i can create new types of channels that have different properties and no one else has to agree to them and even though we can still transact with one another and and send money to the wider network right um, I expect a lot of innovation because it is much faster to iterate because in, in Bitcoin, like we said, if you want to change something in Bitcoin, if you want to introduce something new, everyone needs to agree to that. And changing Bitcoin is inherently complicated and hard, and it must be that way. Um, whereas in Lightning, you can innovate, put it out in production, test, 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 and okay, maybe it's something that grows, maybe it is not. Um, and so you also see uh, competing protocols and competing, you know, solutions. Some would argue that, you know, the, the protocols around LNURL are great and they solve certain problems, aka the Lightning address, for example. Um, while others say, you know, no, these ads, these, these protocols add additional requirements on the user. Therefore, we shouldn't pursue them. Um, because it is a decentralized network, there is no one that can stop anyone from pursuing any of these in the, in the innovative products, ideas, channel types, et cetera, right? So I expect the network to grow a lot. I expect a lot of, you know, competitive ideas and, and methods to do the same thing. And I would hope, and I expect the, tech, the technology uh, evolves in a way where the network can become adversarial, 
Right now, I would argue that it is not adversary. You don't have folks constantly trying to attack the network on a daily basis um, for it to grow to levels of you know maturity and, and being able to power millions and billions of transactions for the billions of people in the world it needs to be adversarial it needs to be extremely stable it needs to be at a position where it just runs so it'll be here it'll be the story of bitcoin lightning is what enables bitcoin to become a payment network and money um, but it is going to change quite drastically over the next, you know, two five years. I think so too. I'm I'm excited to see all the developments. Uh, okay, yeah. one last question. I don't want to take uh, too much of your time. Totally, because you're a devel uh, a developer yourself. There's yes. a lot of people in Indonesia that's yeah you know, quite quite. Uh, capable of developing things, trying new programs and everything. Can you give me words of encouragement or maybe advice on people who wants to, while while in this bear market, it's it's always fascinating to, to learn something new. So uh, what's your advice for people who wants to try to de uh, develop in on Lightning? Because Lightning and Bitcoin is open source. You can just do stuff, try stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, what I love is that over the last coming months and, and years, I guess we've seen uh, a growth in the educational field of Bitcoin, right? We've seen companies come out um, like myself. I am a product of some of that too, given that I went to the Chain Code Labs residency program and that's how Bitcoin and Lightning clicked, right? I, I knew the technology, I was aware of it and I used it a little bit, but it, it didn't click until I learned from you know experts in the field. Uh, so what you've seen is there are now similar, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess you could call them dev training companies and, and NGOs and, and uh, uh, nonprofit companies, which are, you know, Kala Dev uh, in Africa is now able, you know, pursuing the, these seminars and folks are able to join these seminars online learn from experts about Bitcoin and sort of get a very big dose of here's how you build things with Bitcoin and with Lightning. And then you can go off and build your open source projects. You can raise, you can go for a company, you can get together with your friends and build an app. Um, so you have the Kala Dev, you have uh, an, a similar initiative in El Salvador, Torregos. Um, I myself actually got together with two other co-founders of mine and we've just released Vincium which stands for 21 in Portuguese. It's a Brazilian version of that. So we actually just kicked off our very first seminar uh, last this week. So we have, I believe, 20 folks who are learning from us about Bitcoin and Lightning, and then they will all go out to, whether it's trying to find a job in the space, whether it's building their own products and services, whether it's just you know hacking things together. Um, so I would advise folks to get familiar with these, uh, these companies, these uh, nonprofit organizations, because they are helping uh, you know, teach and learn about Bitcoin. Um, I think uh, there is a lot of room uh, to grow in general, Bitcoin and Lightning, um, which means that there's a lot of void. And where, where there is void, there is opportunity, right? Um, what that means is uh, if you see an opportunity and a void and say, why is no one doing this with Lightning? Do some research, do your own run through and understand, are you onto something here or is there a reason why no one's tried? And if you continue to find yourself saying, this is great, this is innovative, why has no one done this? Um, you know, take the leap, go out and learn about the technology even further, uh, do the courses. Uh, there's plenty of, you know, YouTube tutorials, really get familiar with it. Um, I would also advise folks to join the general development community. Uh, of Bitcoin, you know, there are Slack channels, there are IRC channels, there is, you know, GitHub uh, repositories where conversation happens. I think, you know, just like you said, Hanson, this is all open source. It's really up to you to go out and go and get it. Um, and then last but not least, I think the in real life meetings help a lot, right? So whether it's coming to a conference, whether it's getting together with your friends for a uh, meetup, um, you know, I myself I help run the BitDevs New York uh, here in, in New York City, which is where, you know, like-minded enthusiasts of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Core developers, Lightning developers get together and we talk Bitcoin for three plus hours, right? And it's just Bitcoin. And that's where people get jobs and that's where people find, you know, colleagues to eventually go out and build a company. So um, 
there is a large set of people that want Bitcoin to grow and they want the education of Bitcoin to grow. Um, whether it's online or in person, I think it's a matter of being a go-getter and saying the resource is there, the knowledge is there, I just need to sit down and, and learn it, right? Okay, that's very nice information because I'm, I'm, I'm personally very interested with that. And I... Exactly. I think uh, uh, most people will... will will be helpful with your all of your explanations and your 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 advices okay andre uh thanks for your time uh it's been almost an hour this is very insightful very helpful and i think it'll help a lot of indonesian people to to, to view bitcoin uh in a in a broader way uh shining lights uh lightning network and stuff and yeah uh exactly awesome. yeah th thanks so much hansen this is this is great a pleasure to be here and supporting the indonesia bitcoin conference uh it's a shame that it's it's a virtual right maybe hopefully next time uh hopefully i can come in person and we can meet uh, in real life um but yeah reach out to me on twitter my dms are open i am at andre nevis and check out zebedee uh that's z-e-b-e-d-e-e.io um, you know, download the app, get started, meet some game developers. And um, yeah, thanks for having me.